Welcome to Mishnah. Study Masera the Rubin Pedagim of Mishnah Gimel. We're going to Mishnah. We're going to discuss placing a nub in an inaccessible place. So you place it in a in a place that you can't reach it, or you can actually can't reach it. Maybe halachically you can't get to it, right? And therefore, if that happens, it's not going to be considered a nub, and then you're stuck. Um, so, firstly, well, actually, before we jump into the Mishnah, um, Hanaban brings just a few important points to keep in mind as we read the Mishnah. So I'm going to read them because he says, this Mishnah needs some important principles, some that we mentioned, some that we didn't mention. So I'm going to just mention them all and then we'll jump into the Mishnah. So firstly, we know that there's four different Nushiyot for Shabbat, right? Four different domains for Shabbat, the Shut Yachid, the Shut Rabim, the Kalmerit, and Makom Pitu, right? And we explained what all of them are. Um, we said if a person takes from Kalmerit out to the Shut Rabim or the Shut Yachid, he's not going to be Hayamita. Right, rather it's only a sur nidira banan. Right, only time you can be chayim nidira taz. You can take it from the shuti achid to the shuti rabim or vice versa. Um, also, we know that kniyat eruv. Right, when you set the eruv, when you kone the eruv, and it only has to be benashvashot. Right, during the twilight. And let's say the eruv got eaten afterwards. That's fine. Right, as long as it's there during the benashvashot period, that's what counts. Now, also to be right, the view danasi holds. Right, and is going to be like him that. Something that's asur mishum shevut, something that's asur from midrabanan, long azru ala benash mashot. There's no gezera for it burnt during twilight period, during benash mashot, right? Between sunrise, sunset and, and stars out. If something's asur midrabanan, achamim aren't gozer, right? We'll see how this plays effect in our Mishnah. Also, we know you're not allowed to use a uh, tree, right? Mishum shevut, right? Achamim uh, have a gezera that you can't use a tree on Shabbat. You may come to uh, break off a branch. Um, also, we know that a person who set an eruv tehomim, him and his eruv need to be in the same place, meaning in the same domain, right? In the same place where he intended to be. So if he intends to be in Rishut Arbim, it should be with him in Rishut Arbim. If he plans to be in Rishut Yahid, it should be with him in Rishut Yahid. If, if he can't reach it, if he's in Rishut Yahid and in the, in the, in the uh, you know, he's, he's in Rishut Arbim and the item, the eruv is in Rishut Yahid and he can't carry it from one place to the next, that will be a problem. Okay, so now let's jump into the Mishnah. Netano ba'ilan, the mala ma'asarat v'achim en oruv, the mata ma'asarat v'achim are ze eruv. A person places in eruv during during benash v'ashot. He places it um, lower, higher than ten v'achim. It's not considered an eruv. Right, he puts it on the tree above ten v'achim. Right now, we're talking about a tree that's four v'achim by four v'achim wide. Right, and therefore now, if it's above ten v'achim. He intended to be in the Shut Rabim. Now, this item, this Eruv, is on the tree that's a four by four wide, and four tvachim by four tvachim wide, and ten tvachim high. That means it's on the Shut Yachid. And therefore, him and his Eruv are not in the same place, Benash Mashot, and he can't take it. So it's inaccessible. So it's not considered an Eruv, an Eruv. But if it's less than ten tvachim, ah, then this is considered a Karmelit, right? Because less than ten tvachim is considered a Karmelit. And, right, because it's in a place that's accessible to him or only inaccessible midira banan to him right because even though you're not allowed to use a tree on shabbat okay but that's only midira banan a carmelite you can't carry from a carmelite to a uh a shoot and a beam okay but that's also only midira banan so therefore this is considered an edu right it's an important principle right because only these things are these things are only assumed midira banan so therefore his edu counts um Good. Now the Mishnah continues, right? By the way, this is going to be Rabbi Yudan Asi. Um, all this is going to be Yudan Asi, but Halakha is going to be like him, right? Now the Mishnah continues, Nitano Babor, the person put it in a pit, right? Afilo Amok Me'ama, even if it's 100 Amok deep, 300 feet deep, right? Now we're talking about this pit is in a place that's a Karmelit, right? That's what you have to say. And his Bakom Shevita, the person we intended to dwell, is... Um, is above that. Okay, so now it's in the Karmelit. It's in a, you know, as a Karmelit. He's above that. So therefore, it's going to be only Asumi Dirabaran. So it is a Eruv. This is considered an Eruv, right? Eruv Tehomin works. Netaron Berosha Kane or Berosha Kuntas. He puts it above on the top of a reed or on the top of a Kuntas. Kuntas is also some type of um, rod that they would make uh, spears from, right? Kuntas and Kuntas, it's the same thing. Um, Kozman shu talush v'na'utz, na'utz, any time that it's detached from the ground. Filum gavo me'ama areze oru. Even if it's 100 amot high, it's considered an eru. Why does it have to be detached from the ground? Because if it's attached to the ground, we have a gezerah that a person may come and break it off. And that's an isur sekida. 
right? That's a suit that I doubt to break it off. So therefore, you're not allowed to go, and go ahead and do that. But if it's as long as it's a detached from the ground, it's considered an eruv. Netanon bamigdal. Let's say you went ahead and you put it in a chest or in a, or in a closet, right? Or some type of, you know, amigdal. Vidal bifanav. You locked it. Okay, you put the eruv. You locked it away. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. You found this uh, little. Uh, closet outside in the forest, and you went ahead and you put your roof to home in there so you could travel the next day, and you locked it, the avad and you lost the key. And it is a eruv. This is still considered an eruv. Why is it still considered a eruv? Because what could you do? You could just cut the strings, right? You took this lock and you, you know, you, you, you know, you lock these, uh, you know, the strings, you tie the tight, you know, the closet together. Go ahead and cut the strings. Take a knife, cut, you know, and cut the strings. That's fine. Why is it okay? Right, because it's 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 mechalkel, you're ruining, right? If you're ruining the item, the, um, that would be okay. Would be the Ezromer im enya dua shemafteach in komo in eruv. The Bia says no. If you don't, if you don't know where the key is, it's not there, and it's not considered an eruv. Why? Why does Rabbi Yehuda say what, what's what's the problem? Rabbi Yehuda holds that you're not allowed to take en kelinital, right? What's a en kelinital ela letzorach tashmisho. A, a utensil could only be carried for its purpose, right? You go ahead and take a knife to go ahead and, you know, cut your food, but you can't take a knife to go ahead and cut strings, right? That's not allowed according to the Bidiezer, and therefore he says it's not an eruv. But as we mentioned, um, halacha is like the B, right? Who says, um, right? If something is a sur midiram banan, right? Hachamim are not gozer ben hashmashot if there is a mitzvah involved, and halacha is not like it to be the ezer. Rather, you are allowed to cut through um, if you lost the uh, cut the strings through if you lost the key to your eruv on Shabbat.